Welcome to Carbon Focus. The headlines this quarter. Net Zero 2026. We bring you the latest update on our Net Zero Carbon Commitment and carbon emissions figures for 2022 across BAM UK and Ireland. In Data We Trust, we take a look at how our carbon data is calculated. Delivering emissions-free offices, we explore how BAM is investing in zero operational carbon headquarters in Scotland. Carbon negative aggregates, we've been speaking to OCO Technologies to learn more about this innovative material. And solutions for carbon reduction, we take a look at how BAM site solutions are helping to bring zero emission technologies to our projects. And I tell you about the latest carbon forecast. The BAM UK and Ireland division recently announced its new and ambitious carbon reduction target, which will see the organisation become net zero by 2026. This target incorporates not just our direct scope 1 and 2 emissions, but also a selection of scope 3 emissions associated with indirect energy and fuel use, staff travel across all modes, use of hotels, and the upstream well-to-tank emissions associated with fuels and energy. A key aspect of this net zero target is that the division will not be counting its use of renewable energy purchases as zero emissions. Instead, we will be accounting for the real emissions from grid electricity use, as given to us via the National Grid. Further details of BAM's carbon reduction targets which include our reduction pathway and reduction initiatives, can be found in our carbon reduction plan, which is published on our website. Closer to the here and now, our emissions up to the third quarter of 2022 show an impressive reduction of just over 20% in absolute terms compared to 2021. This is thanks predominantly to an increase in our use of grid power and HVO biodiesel. Later, Max will bring you more of our carbon emission statistics from 2022. Having correct and robust data is the foundation that enables us to make more informed choices. For carbon emissions, it is commonplace to rely on financial conversion factors to calculate emissions, but this methodology is known to be quite vague and inaccurate. In 2019, BAM moved to a more robust approach that leverages pre-existing data from our supply chain. Here's our sustainability analyst, Max, to explain more. The construction industry is complex with tens of thousands of organisations working alongside each other. Calculating carbon is therefore very challenging, with organisations relying on projects to input data through various tools. Our approach is to target data collection from suppliers directly using pre-existing databases such as transaction records. This ensures that our data is accurate, complete and reliable. With this high degree of granularity, we are able to identify and apply specific carbon factors from recognised industry databases, such as the Inventory of Carbon and Energy and the UK Government's published data. This means we are able to obtain a more accurate carbon total. An example of how we are striving to get the greatest level of accuracy to our activity data can be found in our electricity and staff transport. For our electricity, we are using the National Grid's API to get day level carbon factors. And for our staff transport, we are using vehicle specific carbon factors so that employees can have personalized carbon footprints from their staff travel impacts. Our approach also leverages our native Microsoft suite of applications such as Excel, Power BI and SQL Server. This means our outputs are easy to share far and wide and avoids shadow carbon accounting, as well as providing a single source of the truth for all of our stakeholders to draw down from. Please reach out to me if you want any more information. As part of becoming a net zero business, we need to focus on all aspects of our operations, and that includes our portfolio of offices and depots. These facilities often comprise collections of modular buildings with poor energy efficiency. Our Kilsyfe depot in Scotland is hoping to change this by building BAM's first zero operational carbon office. Here's Hannah Granger to give an overview of the scheme. Hi, I'm Hannah Granger and I'm section engineer at the Kilsyfe office campus project. This state-of-the-art building is going to be BAM's first operationally carbon-free building. 
It's going to be 2,000 square metres of office space to facilitate all existing BAM departments in Scotland. We're looking to include a 250 kilowatt solar array and heat pumps, which will reduce our carbon annually by 100 tonnes. We recently commenced construction on the office building, um, which will replace the existing buildings that you can see behind me in the Kilsyth Yard. Um, and we're scheduled to complete construction in summer 2023. Aggregates are the single most utilised resource in the construction industry, with some 300 million tonnes being consumed annually across the UK and Ireland. These aggregates can be everything from sand right through to crushed rock and are used as fill materials or as a constituent part of other materials such as asphalt and concrete. In 2021, the Mineral Products Association have warned that there just won't be enough primary aggregate to supply our increasing demand. So we must consider ways to make better use of recycled aggregates or more novel alternatives. Recently, I went to visit OCO Technologies to learn more about their innovative carbon negative aggregate product. Here at OCO Technology, there are three main strands to our business. Firstly, we treat industrial waste generated by the new breed of energy from waste facilities. Secondly, we capture carbon dioxide in the waste management process. And thirdly, we create a carbon negative aggregate. This carbon negative aggregate is traded under the name of MLS, an acronym for manufactured limestone. It's carbon negative because we capture more CO2 in the process than is emitted during production. MLS can be used as a substitute for virgin limestone in applications such as ready mixed concrete, in concrete blocks and in tarmac. We see the potential for MLS as being huge in decarbonising downstream products and also decarbonising the construction supply chain in the future. When it comes to decarbonising site accommodation, there's been a steady decrease in emissions footprint. This is thanks mainly to improving their thermal performance, as well as swapping out older appliances for more modern energy efficient ones. In addition to this, our projects are increasingly required to give provision for electric vehicle charging, whilst at the same time seeking to move away from diesel generators. For many years, BAM Site Solutions has been continually investing in these areas. Recently, I spoke to Justin Mitchell, who gave more insights about their latest offerings. Hi, I'm Justin Mitchell, Senior Operations Manager for Site Solutions and Charging Solutions. As you can see behind me, we've got a selection of different products which provide the uh, infrastructure that you need at site to cover your EV charging and sustainable energy use using battery energy storage units, solar PV and site lighting requirements. Included within our product list is a cabin with a solar PV array on the roof that will feed into the battery directly. Uh, the battery can also take advantage of a constrained grid supply, making sure that you're able to provide the full office and welfare setup with even a limited supply of capability. Also included within our products are a range of EV charging points for temporary site construction site use and permanent installations once they're completed. These EV charging points become available with a range of different tariffs and payment options available. For more information about any of our products, please contact either myself, Justin Mitchell, or Gavin Vella for further information. Now let's hear what Max has in store for us in the Carbon Forecast. a fairly settled few months for our direct emissions, although there has been an intense area of low pressure establishing itself over the HS2 scheme. This project has a colossal appetite for fuel, associated with its earthworks activities, and contributed close to 25% to our direct emission figures for the quarter. The UK and Ireland division overall reported 30,000 tonnes of direct emissions associated with the use of fuels, energy and staff transport, with civil engineering activities continuing to dominate our footprint. Besides HS2, other emission hotspots include Brisbane Metro, Sky Studios and the new Children's Hospital. 
Activities from the Ventures segment also accounted for a noticeable amount of emissions, predominantly arising from their staff transport. Overall, we have achieved a 20% decrease in emissions compared to last year. Workload overall remains at similar levels compared to last year, making this reduction a truly impressive achievement. Heavy and persistent HVO showers have continued as we move through this quarter, with 2 million litres recorded across the UK and Ireland division for the whole of 2022. This resulted in the avoidance of 5 kilotons of carbon emissions, which is equivalent to hauling a single truckload of soil around the earth 150 times. The share of electricity consumption utilising grid connections, as opposed to diesel generators, has also increased by a quarter compared to our 2015 baseline. Where diesel generators continue to be used, the emissions from this is being reduced through using hybrid technologies such as solar and battery combinations. Looking ahead towards the end of 2022, the low pressure system will remain centred at HS2 with strong gusts of carbon emissions associated with earthworks activities. For the rest of UK and Ireland, we should continue to see a relatively stable weather pattern with carbon emissions reductions accelerating as we move forward towards our net zero 2026 goal. That's all for now. Back to you, Sarah. Thanks, Max. So that's all for this episode of Carbon Focus. Thanks for watching and see you again on the next edition.